Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome to our latest webcast that we're bringing you from Travel Weekly as part of our Roadmap to Recovery series. Uh, and I'm joined today by Miles Morgan, who is the chairman of Miles Morgan Travel, uh, by Paul Cleary, the chief executive of Carib Tours, and by Lisa McCauley, who is the managing director of Gold Medal Travel. So hello, everyone. Um, great to see you. Thank you for joining us. And we wanted you to come on to talk because last night we had another um, announcement from the government regarding the traffic light uh, system. It was expected actually today, it came a little bit early. Uh, and I would say the reaction I've seen so far has been mixed, um, but perhaps we can get your view. Let's start with you, Miles, as a travel agent. Is it, is it welcomed or are you still frustrated? The, the, probably the best summary I can get, it, it, it's a step in the right direction, is probably the most positive thing I can say, um, because a lot of the things, you, you look at the French decision, that was only really putting right something that should never have happened in the first place, so you can hardly really say that's positive, because it should never have happened in the first place. Um, I think what we're looking for is some more clarity around the testing, and the other thing, if we want to give people confidence, is a change in the countries moving from one color to another you know the the poor people now out in mexico trying to find their way back by sunday is just a horror show for those people and so i think for me you know yes okay step in the right direction but there is still two huge things that need addressing to get the wheels back on the bus one is the testing the lunatic pcr testing that the rest of europe isn't doing and the second is a sort of really sensible, pragmatic way to move from one colour to another, which we understand is potentially going to happen from time to time, but we can't do it like the way it is. It's just impractical for, for everybody concerned. Just because the time that they give you is just too short to then try and, try and get home. All right, good, good points there, Miles. And let's, let's come back to some of those in a second, but let's just go over the, the, the additions and the, uh, the changes to the list. If I come to you, Lisa, uh, initially, because... Um, obviously, the UAE has moved off the red list to Amber, big destination for gold medal. Um, so that must that must be good news for you. It, it, it is. Yeah, um, I think we're probably all going to be aligned in terms of what we say here. I think there's it is a step in the right direction. I think it almost sometimes feels like you're being given in one hand and taken away in the other because we have got Mexico um, to deal with, as, as Miles said. But from a UAE point of view, yeah, it's it's brilliant news. Um, you know, the first booking I took this morning was twenty five thousand pounds to uh, Dubai, and it was for a much shorter lead in than what we've been seeing. And the UAE for me had really dropped uh, significantly in terms of what we were booking, and it, and pretty much everything that I've been taking is well into twenty twenty two. So it's nice to see something coming through on long haul for twenty twenty one. Interestingly, when when we had the last move, if you cast your mind back to November 2020, when Dubai um, then went on the on the green list, we did see a huge spike. But that was in November, and we managed to capture an awful lot of Christmas business. Yeah. So you know we are talking about it going green. Great, sorry, going amber. Great. We've got a lot of VFR traffic, so flight only numbers are up this morning. Um, but it's summer in Dubai, um, you know, so as long as the destination can stay on amber or move to green as we come through the summer and then we move into the winter, then it'll be even better news because we've got things like Expo, uh, the build up to Expo, et cetera, et cetera. But, but yeah, at UAE for us, uh, it's, it's, it's a big, big step in the right direction. Okay, good. All right. And I know you sell the UAE, uh, Paul, you also sell Mexico, which both... Uh, the yeah. other guys have, have mentioned and um, I think someone said there's about 6,000 Brits at the moment desperately trying to get a flight back by Sunday. Uh, have you got customers out in Mexico? Are you having to deal with some of that? Yeah, no, we haven't. And, and, and for, 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 for once, I'm grateful. We've, we've got no one in Mexico. So it was a mixed bag last night for us. Mexico going red, Mexico going red was a shame, um, but expected, actually, because if you just look at what's happening in the world, I, I, I may be surprised that, that hadn't happened before. I think UAE going um, amber is really good news for us. Um, and, you know, it's like being in an abusive relationship with this government. Just Spain staying where it was on that amber without going to that amber plus. 
helped us as well. Do you know what I mean? Just the government not doing something stupid was good news. So you, I find myself being it's grateful. grateful for, yeah. yeah, and that's nuts. And I'm not talking about me. I mean, I'm talking about all of us. I'm talking about the travel agents who are watching this. It That's what's a little bit crazy. But And, and I think Miles is right. France was only just re putting right what was clearly a wrong I, decision. I think, I think Shap said it's allowed us to amend France and reunion. And I think a lot of people went, amend? You, think you should be saying correct yeah. something we did wrong. I mean, he, they, they choose their words very carefully, don't they? But I think, I think, I think our overall view on it is I, I'm relieved. I'm relieved, not delighted. But I mean, you, know, you never know on these Wednesdays and Thursdays announcements that things can go horribly wrong. It is, and I think Miles, who said this, it is a step in the right, it's imperfect, but all of this is imperfect. It is a step in the right direction. So disappointed about Mexico, pleased that about Spain and Greece didn't go on to this amber plus thing. And I'm glad that seems to be finally got rid of now. I was gonna say, do we think that amber plus now is completely, you know, that's not going to be used again? Or is that threat still hanging over us that they could still bring that back in with another destination? I, I think that, Threat has gone, but that won't age well if we if we do another webcast next week. But I, I, for now, I think that threat has gone, and I hope it has because the agents that we're speaking to who've been wanting to book Spain all last week and the week before haven't been because their clients are so concerned. They were about, waiting for this review. Yeah, I mean, I could tell you stories, and I won't go into it. About we we had live bookings. We had a thirty-seven thousand pound booking lease um, for Spain that confirmed for Ibiza. But then the guy got cold feet for reasons you don't understand. Because all over the media last week, every day was the talk of Greece and Spain and all Balearics going into Amber Plus. So, yeah, I think that's gone for now. The, the speculation certainly hasn't helped anybody. And if you look to the Prime Minister's um, uh, interview, I think a couple of days ago, he himself said he wanted a more simplified yeah. process. So uh, you would like to think that... Um, that means that Amber Plus or any Plus won't then yeah. uh, reappear. But, do, but Miles, you're saying you would quite like it just to be green or red, and you think yes. that, and you think that's possible. Yes, of course, of course it's possible. Everything is possible. I think you know the the car analogy. When you're car, driving a car, Lucy, when when the lights are green, you know what to do. When the lights are red, you know what to do. When the light is amber, you're thinking, do I go or, or do I stop? And and it's no different. And I think. Clarity is what's needed. We can get that clarity. There's no reason why we can't get that clarity. Amber is a is is a dangerous colour, and I think you know making it simpler with red and green, you know, it's going to help without a doubt. Because of all this, and Paul touched on it, the biggest single thing that we're lacking at the moment is confidence, um, and that confidence isn't there because of speculation. It's actually not there in most cases because of reality, it's there because of speculation. And, you know, the rumor for the last six days about Amber Plus for, for Greece and Spain made everybody nervous yet again. And so, and I think the government don't appreciate what rumor does for our industry. Not sometimes fact, just rumor is enough to, to cause significant uh, damage to the industry. Yeah, well, you, you mentioned testing at the outset. I mean, I think there was some disappointment that the testing requirements weren't lifted for double vaccinated passengers. Um, the the, the pre-departure test, particularly, that that could have been uh, removed. That requirement um, is that some is that a view you share? Because it's an extra cost. It's another hassle. It's you know it, that must be a deterrent to some. Yeah, I, I think I understand the testing. I understand the need for testing. Um, unfortunately for me, my, my confidence in why we're doing the testing and the reason for doing the testing has been completely shot out of the water today with um, with the news from, from the MP Hugh Merriman about the facts regarding the PCR testing that people are doing when they return to the UK, the one two days after they return, where from the 1st of July, some half a million tests were taken of which just short of 6,000 were positive. And for some unknown reason, only 5% of those were geosequenced to see whether they've got variants or not. And to my mind, the whole point of doing PCR testing, the more rigorous test of the two, is to stop variants. Now, if you're not gonna geosequence every single one of those positives, it is not doing the job it's set up for. It is simply not. So if that's the case, it makes total obvious sense to say, well, let's forget that. 
and let's just do lateral flow testing for people, replacing the PCR, huge reduction in costs for the traveling public, meaning that your everyday person in the street can go on holiday at an affordable rate instead of paying the lunatic amounts of money required for testing, which I know are significantly less than they were a few months back, but it is still an awful lot more money for a family of four. And it just, if it was keeping the country safe, that's one thing, but when they don't do the job they should be doing with the geosequencing, what is the point? So, you, so you're saying you kind of understood it until this morning when you were made aware that they actually weren't doing the full geosequencing on the, on those tests and therefore it now just makes a bit of a mockery of it, of it happening at all. It, it, it makes the whole thing a laughing stock. You know, the, the misnomer that's keeping the country safe <clears throat> from variants clearly is factually incorrect. It's simply not doing it because they're not geosequencing 95% of the population. They only geosequence, I think it's 357 people. Of that, of that, yeah. It's just yeah. crazy. It doesn't make sense, and and and, and, and no other country, you know, other countries aren't aren't doing this. They're not having that as a, as a requirement anyway, and we are, and yet we're one of the highest vaccination rollout countries. You know, so we perhaps shouldn't need to be doing it as much as others, and yet we've we've got much tighter restrictions, haven't we? Yeah, I mean, let me put my Grant Chaps hat on now then and tell you what we should be doing because it, it's quite simple in my book. What we should be doing is we should be doing green and we should be doing red and if there is a, a danger or a concern that a country is going to move from one to the other we give a sensible period of notice two weeks as a minimum for that change to take place and during the course of those two weeks every single person moves from doing a lateral flow to doing a pcr and they geo sequence every single one of them to keep the country safe it is as simple as that lucy and then nobody can say the country's at risk from from people going on overseas holidays and visiting friends and relatives and doing business it just plugs every gap. It's much simpler for the public. It's much cheaper for people to travel. And it just makes common sense. Morgan, Morgan for PM. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you agree with Miles, Lisa? Is that, do you think that, I mean, it, it, it seems very straightforward, doesn't it? And it's like, but if Miles can work that out, and if we all agree that, and we're in the industry, and that would help us, it would get the country moving. Why, why are we still having this battle with the government? Gosh, um, that's a loaded question, isn't it? Um, I, I do agree with Miles. I do think it it could be much more simplistic. My fear would be that when you look at map, you see the vast majority of countries are still in amber. And so if we then pushed for a red and green, my fear would be that the nervousness of the government would be that they would move more on red than green. So um, I, I think that's a risk, but in principle, you absolutely should be able to go, go or not go. It's far, far easier for all of us to work with and the consumer to understand as well. The, the news this morning in terms of what Miles has just been talking about there uh, with regards to uh, testing, testing it for me is one of the, if not the biggest blocker at the moment in terms of people being able to uh, just go away freely. I think the, the perception of what you have to do, um, which is actually worse than the reality of what you've got to do, but the perception yeah. of it is, is, is just, it's, firstly, it's mind-blowingly expensive for a lot of people. It's, it's hassle that people could well do without. But what we've seen this morning, for me, testing has lost its logic. And I was on this, exactly the same camp as Miles. I agreed with it. And, you know, we... We all understand that public health, you know, and public safety comes first. But when you read that data, it blows it out of the water for me. So it's just nonsensical. Um, so, but why are we not, um, you know, why is the message not getting through to government? That, Lucy, I, I don't know. If we if we knew that, we'd have had more success, I think. Yeah. yeah. So, so a lot of people have said... Um, as you have, it's a step in the right direction, and you know it's it's welcome. We'd like to have seen more green, and you know there's bits that we would have changed. But under underneath all of this, people are saying it's still not enough to save the summer. I think mean, people have said summer has now been lost. Any attempt to save summer is over. Um, now I know you know a couple of you work more in long haul. You're not so dependent on that sort of Mediterranean short haul summer season. But for travel agents watching this, this is quite this is this is quite serious. Um, into, if, if that's if that's the case, if summer really is over and we're going to get nothing now for this summer 2021, what, what's your view on that, Paul? 
Well, I, I saw I saw headlines this morning. This hasn't saved summer. Well, let, let's be clear. This was never going to save summer. This, yeah. this 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 was this was coming on the fourth of August. I mean, I don't know who who could possibly think we could save summer. I think back very quickly back to what Miles was saying. Miles, you're you're a genius. So succinct. That is exactly what we need. But it isn't what we've got, and I think we've got to deal with what we've got. All of this is happening because the vaccination ministry aren't talking to the Home Office. The Home Office aren't talking with FCDO and the Transport Department. That is why it's, if it appears like a really confused system, it's because it's a really confused system. And when Boris says he wants a simple, uh, he wants to simplify things, he doesn't know what he wants. He just wants them all to stop squabbling. So that's why we're in that situation. We, uh, red and green is what we would all want. We, We are treating Amber is the new green. If this doesn't get too confusing, amber is the amber is the new green for us, and we are pushing through. And and, and our customers kind of going with that. If you're saying you're, you're yeah. fine on amber, you don't have to isolate. It's no problem. You'll be fine. Are people? They, they, they are Lucy, but uh, there's a big caveat. We sell luxury holidays. Our price point is going to be more expensive than than, 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 than others. So, so there isn't quite the economic barrier. With, with our clients, which I, I, I'm grateful for, but it's bloody expensive. You're absolutely right. We're a family of five miles. We're off to Croatia next week, or we hope we're going to Croatia next week because we're isolating like Lisa is. Um, and I think our testing for a family of five is 550 quid before we go. And it's 550 quid whether we're negative or positive, but it, that's sunk money and then there's more testing when you go. So we are seeing quite a bit of late business. I'm not being clever about that and nowhere near as much as we would like but we are seeing a significant i mean i think last week 60 percent of all bookings were late and and that's traveling in the next four or five weeks but every booking comes with and miles will know this better than anybody every booking comes with a massive health warning a massive dollop of uncertainty doesn't it miles in terms of the questions that our, our guys are being asked or the travel agents being asked um, and everyone, every customer wants to be able to get out of jail free if the advice goes uh, against them because everyone's so incredibly nervous. So some have can't be saved. Some, some, some has gone, but everything we are doing now for a while is mitigating losses by, 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 by getting those bookings away that we can. Yeah. And Miles, let's ask you then, because I think when we had the cruise um, news, you know, around the the SCDO advice against international cruising lifted. That I think that gave you a bit of a boost. Um, but where are you now in terms of demand and and your thoughts for the rest of the, the summer? You know, have you seen a bit more confidence coming back? Or how are you feeling? Yeah, significantly. I mean, it, probably if I wind the clock back some five weeks, we we were doing no summer 2021 business with the exception of the the seacations the cruises going around the uk we're now doing bookings every single day for lates just like paul described so it's encouraging to see that the demand is there and people are wanting to do it to pick up on lisa's point you know the the biggest consumer feedback is it's just too much of a faff you know and that is putting a lot of people off but equally the reality of the faff is nowhere near as bad as it appears. And every single person I've spoken to that's traveled over the last few few weeks have said, God, blimey, you know, I was concerned about it, but it was actually really easy. Um, but the faff is in people's heads and it's hard to overcome that. And equally, uh, as Paul said, I mean, in the business as usual environment, we've always got some bookings in intensive care. You know, clients were keeping an eye on to make sure everything runs smoothly because they've got an issue with this or pre-existing medical or something. At the moment, <clears throat> every single booking that we've got at the minute is in intensive care. You know, so there is an awful lot more work with every single transaction. To I was make- say, what, what, what do you mean by that? It just means that you are literally having to handhold the customer, lots of extra work, obviously doing all their... How, how, have, we got on, have we got on the testing book for them? Yeah. Do they know yeah. where they're dropping off their test to on the service station on the M4? Have we made sure they filled in their passenger locator form for the inward and the outward? Have we made sure they've got somewhere to do their test 72 hours before they fly back, et cetera, et cetera? You know, is their kids involved? Because that's even more tricky. You know, all of that stuff needs managing and boxing off to make sure everything's right for the person to travel. And, you know, that's very different from a business as usual environment. So 
you know, on the one hand, it's great to get the bookings because let's be frank, for any travel business at the moment, late means proper money for the first time for many in a long, long time. So it really is welcomed because it's proper money and we haven't had proper money for oh, months, Lucy, yeah, for months yeah. and months, but it comes with a cost because every yeah. transaction time is a lot longer than normal. And then, actually, oh, go on, Lisa. Sorry, Lucy, I was just going to add to that, actually. What a conversation I was having with somebody yesterday, actually, what they, they were saying exactly the same as what Miles has just said there is the amount of work that's now required on these late bookings, it, you know, it's significant. And actually, the price point is a lot lower than what it would have been. So you're putting a lot more effort in for lesser return than you would have done because whilst your commission may still be as an agent, may still be at the same level, the average si uh, uh, selling price right. for, for this summer is so low as well. But a couple of uh, points I was just thinking of is, you know, I travel to an amber destination, plenty of, you know, back to the amber is the new green. You know, I think there are a number of people that would happily travel to amber. The, and, and, and Paul mentioned that, you know, Summer was never going to be saved by yesterday's announcement. I think that's fact. But we've got to be realistic as well. When you look at the destinations that, you know, would be uh, appealing to the British public in the summer holidays, the only one that's really missing in terms of being on red is Turkey. Okay. So you've got Spain, Greece, um, you know, you've, you've got France now addressed, yeah. uh, Portugal, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, they will come with their nuances in terms of entry requirements. But, you know, the industry has got a large proportion of destinations available for it to sell. So I don't think that's so much of the problem. I still think it's the consumer confidence, which is yeah. the issue. Yeah. yeah. I, I, funny enough, a friend of mine, I knew that she was, toy, you know, she goes to France every single year. So I texted her late last night and said, well, you can, you know, you can now, France is off the Amber Plus list. You can, you can go now because I was worried about her. And she just came back and went, I, I just, I just, I know yeah. it. Is. I just can't be bothered now. I'm going to go to Devon. She's and just Lucy, given up. She's absolutely Lucy, not. That's you know, it. There is that fatigue. There is that fatigue. And also, I mean, if I, I just dive in on that, um, Lisa, but we are all so close to this. We know everything because we, we obsess yeah. about it. And it's all we've talked about for a year and a half. Punters don't. The, the average customers, they, they're going about, they're running their own businesses, running their own families, but living, but it's immensely confusing. But I think the key point you make there, Lisa, between January and May, it was essentially illegal to go on holiday. Now, we're, we're, we're ostensibly a Caribbean specialist, but many of my destinations are green, Barbados, Antigua, they're, they're green. The rest are amber, most of them are amber. Spain's amber, Greece is amber. It's a massive headache, it's a massive nuisance, it's a massive onerous task, but we've got stuff to sell. And that, that, that's how we, that's, that's what we do. And that's all, that's all we can do. So our job, exhausting as it is, is just to keep on pushing, pushing, pushing. And intensive care is a really good way of putting it, Mars. Every single booking needs to be nursed through. And every time a plane takes off, we high five. But that's what we've got to do, because that is what it's going to be like. I mean, that, that's the rest of the summer for us. Um, uh, you know, we got the news yesterday that 16 and 17 year olds will be vaccinated in, in, in the coming weeks. We're, we are all going to be vaccinated for, for too long and, and next year will look much brighter. But our only our only option now is to keep pushing, is to keep pushing on these destinations. And, and we're just grateful every day that we've got something to sell. But I've got to tell you, I don't know about you all, but January to May, they were dark times when, when it was illegal to travel. Yeah. We, we, no, we, so we're in, we got, we're in a better position and we've got to remember that. It, and I know, I know, hard yeah. Work. yeah. Yeah. But, but the point about every booking, Miles, taking so much more work, um, we've got furlough coming to an end. I know you had furloughed and flexi furlough and you're bringing staff on, but you know, I, I don't know whether you're going to bring them all back now at the end of furlough. I mean, how does it work? You haven't suddenly got loads more money to pay everybody and you need probably more people to service all these much more labour intensive, complex bookings. So that must be um, something that's hard to balance. 
It is a thing that's hard to balance. I, I think one of the things that that's, you know, that's absolutely been against us for the whole of this period, and it, and it will be the same for, for, for Paul and for Lisa, is that we haven't fully taken advantage of furlough. And that's the, probably the biggest frustration that the government have not understood, that probably if I averaged out since uh, last March, um, I've probably been employing about 40 40% 40 of my staff during that period. So 40% of my payroll, I have not taken advantage of furlough one iota because I've been looking after, you know, customers, cancellations, rebooks. And so if you like the gap between, you know, in theory, having zero people working to having everybody working, which we have to by the end of September, is not that big a, a gap to bridge anymore because, you know, potentially I've had more people working and as businesses picked up, you know, yeah. it, it, it's picking up. And so I'm quietly optimistic that we'll be in a position to, to get all the guys back, um, maybe even earlier if things pick up slightly earlier. You know, I'm hopeful. We've, we've had all of our branches open since the first time that we could. We're yeah. doing four hours, unlike a lot of people, we're opening till 10 o'clock in the evening as we normally do because I think there's an awful lot in the outward message to consumers saying, for us, it's business as usual. We're out there, we're there to look after you, we're there to do your bookings, and we're up for it. And I think, you know, positive mindset is a lot of it. I've, I've um, this morning done a staff training this morning with uh, half our sales team. I'm doing the other half tomorrow morning. And the message is quite a clear one. This is much simpler than you think. And we need to get our positive pants on and we need to start selling more holidays late. And and what, what we noticed, and it was brilliant. We had a manager's, we actually had a face-to-face -face manager's meeting last week, Lucy. It was amazing. Um, yeah. And what we gleaned from that manager's meeting was, despite having an incredibly experienced team of travel agents running my shops, there was a lack of confidence about the testing, about the rules, and demystifying that could unlock things for us and move us from here to here we're already on the upward curve i think we can go a lot further than that because there is no doubt there is customer demand and if we try and say you know what guys the faff is not as bad as you think it is as far as the customers are concerned we can inspire people to travel again and we can get you know push on into the autumn and, and, and see greater success so you know optimistic without a shadow of a doubt about the future nervous like probably all of us because we've seen more banana skins over the last you know 17 months than than we've ever seen and and, and left fielders that you just don't think you know you, t you turn your mind back to that portuguese decision oh, that yeah. was a killer at the beginning of the summer absolute yeah. killer and you look back at it and you go what nepalese variant did you guys see because nobody's seen the bloody thing since you know, it, I tell you what, some of those decisions were, were painful at the time and have been painful since when you play them back through. But, you know, that's the past. We've got to get on with it and, and, and go with where we are today. And where we are today is the best position we've been in. We just need to build from it and build back over the, the final half of this year. Yeah. Well, it, I love that. It's my headline for me anyway. Get your positive pants on. Okay. I love that. Um, <laughs> But it's a lot, yeah, it's a lot, isn't it, to put the onus on travel agents to have to do that yeah. job, to, 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 you know, demystify, to, you know, raise the confidence of the general public. I mean, it's great that you're doing it. Let's hope other agents will be inspired by what you're doing, Miles, and do the same. But should, should you know, you presumably would like help from elsewhere. I mean, somebody was tweeting saying, we need the government to come out with a message and say it is safe to travel, not all this complexity that makes people think actually I shouldn't be traveling. So, you know, how else can we, you've all said it, the confidence is the key thing. How else can we raise the confidence as an industry, Lisa? I, I just don't believe that the government will ever come out and say it's safe to travel. So uh, there's no point in waiting. No, no. there's no point in wait, as waiting for that. So, um, you know, I, I went to Parma for a few days, came back, told all the, all the team, everybody was on tenterhooks, how did everything go? Because I hadn't managed to get Neve and her friend tested before we went. So we actually used the drive-in testing facility at Manchester Airport, talking about, talk about taking it to the wire, but it worked, worked seamlessly, it was brilliant. And, you know, I, Karen Fletcher, who heads up our agency sales, she just come back from Greece and she's been sending regular updates about, you know, what she's been doing um, over there. So I think we need to put more positive messaging out there. Um, but 
you know, it doesn't help because for every positive message you there there is, there is a negative headline somewhere along the line, um, which is usually from mainstream media. Um, we even had even a bag, the baggage handling one this week, yeah. which was like, yeah. oh, if you go on holiday, yeah. you're not. It's going to take you hours. I mean, there was even when you think there's a, you know, you're allowed to go. There's then another thing that's going to put you off. So on the same day that I was travelling back from from Parma, it literally took me thirty minutes from check in to uh, to get through security at Parma, and just less than uh, at Manchester Airport. I've never moved through an airport so quickly. And, and you know what, I felt compelled to tweet that because, uh, you know, a newspaper that shall remain uh, unnamed was actually at the same time talking about six hour potential six hour queues. Yeah. And, you know, that doesn't help. It doesn't help anybody. So, you know, there is I do feel an obligation that we should be more vocal about when it goes right. Um, and if you if you want to go traveling, you'll go traveling. Um, but it, it it will come as no surprise that an awful lot of people are just staying put in the UK um, this summer. Yeah, yeah. But but showing, I mean, actually, I'm I'm looking at people's pictures and holiday pictures, and it makes you want to go. And I think if you know that kind of word of mouth that it's safe, everything you're doing and passing that back to your team and making them confident, I'm sure sure that will help. And that you know we're trying to do the same. We're sending journalists whenever we can now yeah. to all these different destinations. To, to, to convey that message through through the pages and the and and, and through, of Travel Weekly and, and through our website. And I think I, Paul said it earlier. You know, you do it one, and I, you know, the lead up to that trip, I was thinking, oh, I've got this right, I've got that right. Yeah. You come back and you go, okay, I'm booking another. So it's just getting them to book a first one in the first place that's the challenge. Because once you've done it, actually, you do realise that really it's not as onerous as as what you might think it is in the first place. Yeah. Just just quickly, Lisa, you mentioned there that, you know, you'd been compelled to put out a tweet. And it just made me think of all the commentary I've seen in the last 24 hours of people so angry still that we're getting these updates from Grant Shapps via Twitter. I mean, does that still annoy the industry or are we just now? I mean, Paul, you're laughing. But, I mean, are we just... We used to talk about this. How dare he treat... You know, this is our livelihood. This is our business. And he just does a quick tweet. Do you think this is the way it's going to be, isn't it? Lucy, so there, there you go. And I think encapsulated the whole problem it's almost a casual disdain of uh, a late night tweet i mean honestly um I, I i first did a web webinar with travel weekly i think it was last july and i think i said to holly or oh, is on the spire i think i even said then if we're going to wait around for the government to help us or to or, to, or for the government to get a clue we'll all go out of business and you know lisa these headlines about baggage or immigration or that you're absolutely right but they will always be the case and and, and I think I, I love the fact that Miles wears positive pants as well I think we've had no choice all of us to absolutely just stick our chins out and, and, and keep going keep going keep going because that's all we can do and you know there will always be you know Long before COVID, we would get horror stories about NHS waiting lists. Long before COVID, we would get um, stories about NHS going into meltdown over winter. So we'll always be trying to be kept in a perpetual state of terror for, 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 for travel for, for, or for whatever it might be. And, and I just think we have got no choice. There is no alternative at all but to not be blindly positive, not to be naive but just to keep doing what we're good at. And it's become harder. And Miles' staff, Lisa's staff, they'll be on their knees at times. You would have, you're not going to talk about it on a webinar, but you would have dealt with all manner of tears and stress in the last year and a half because every agent and every one of my team has felt exactly the same. But there, there isn't an alternative. Waiting for the government, I think for us, waiting for the government to help us, waiting for them to say positive things about it's okay to travel it isn't going to happen. The same where everyone was waiting for sector-specific support. I said that at the get-go. Of course we all want it. It's not going to happen. So we, I, I think we've got very few options, but to keep doing what we're doing and have faith that, there, I know we've said it before, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. And the announcement from last night was not great news, but it was a move in the right direction. Okay. All right. And just finally... 
Go on, Sorry, I was just going to say, in terms of the communication that via Twitter, I guess all of us then just kind of shrugged our shoulders and, and accepted it. But, you know, I, any any business leader knows that communication is the number one priority and it's absolutely key for running a successful business. If the government were a business, they'd all be fired by now. That sounds quite dramatic, but there, there's, there's no way that we as an industry should be finding out policies or changes or procedures via a social media platform. But but it is what it is. So we're accepting of it. But the communication, I think, is- And, and, and you, as running a business, you find out exactly the same time as it comes. You don't get any advance warning. You literally just, you know, I, I don't just mean last night's announcement, all the way through this. Have they ever kind of communicated to you as people running the travel industry? Do they ever sort of give you any advance notice? No, last last night was a, a bit of a heads up. Um, but other than that, no, we, we've been, you know, we've been glued to Twitter like many others. Yeah. Right? Yeah, at five, oh. five o'clock Thursday, wasn't it? And previously, so yeah. yeah. All right, I was just going to ask you to, to to finish things for us, Mars, because you did say yes, you're nervous, but you are actually optimistic, and I think that's a good place for us to finish on because you know I know we've lost effectively two years now. It's just it's just we would never have dreamed we'd be in this position, but it does feel like things are starting to, to move a bit. And I know you've got good bookings for 22 and 23. So perhaps just leave us on a bit of a high. <laughs> no pressure then to come up with a positive. Yeah. I can say one thing that's absolute fact, and, and that is we are in the best position we've been in since this thing started. That, that I think everybody would agree on. It's about where we go from here. I think the one thing I can see is that if you wind back slightly to earlier on in the year, the public sentiment was against travel and the government are after the populist vote and the populist vote said travel is a bad thing. People, you know, the percentage of the population thinking that travel was a bad thing was, was high. That now has changed and I think quietly the public are coming around to, we just need to get on with our lives now. And I think that will increase the pressure on the government to take a more pragmatic, sensible approach to travel and get the wheels firmly back on the bus with some of the protocols we've talked about earlier on. So I do think the winds are changing there. I think, will it be quick enough for some businesses? I hope so, because let's be frank, this is a race for cash for people. You know, there is no doubt it's a race for cash for all of us. And so will it come quickly enough for people? I hope so. But, you know, that's the positive is the winds are change are there. The public is starting to get behind us, which they weren't in the first half of this year. The vaccination programs go well, the 16, 17 year olds, the boosters. You know, there is a lot of good news at the moment that hasn't been there. And so, yes, Lucy Huxley, I am positive going into the autumn that things are going to be good. All right. Brilliant. OK, well, I'm really grateful for your time and your insight and your views and your opinions. It's, it's fantastic um, to have you on and to and I wish you all the best with um, the next stage in this roller coaster that we're all going through. But thank you very much to Miles from Miles Morgan Travel, to Paul from Carib Tours and to Lisa from Gold Medal Travel. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. For having thank me. you.